For today's discussion is another communicable disease discussion because we're going to have meningitis. If you want to know more about that, stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create nursing educational contests to help nursing students with their studies. If that's something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my videos every single day. Don't miss that. I subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch me do with uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that will really help me know that you like to see more contents like this. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. Hi nurses, ngayong araw nga na ito ay pag-uusapan natin ang about sa meningitis. This is one of your requests you guys and I create several videos in regards to communicable diseases, nursing communicable diseases. I'll be putting the uh, the links on the description box or simply click this icon button. Check out mo yun, marami rin akong videos. But for today, this is very specific about meningitis. I'm gonna give you everything that you need to know when it comes to meningitis. Now, in order for me to do that, I will switch back to my PC and I'll see you guys in a bit. Welcome back nga guys sa ating formal discussion ng yung meningitis. This is under your medical surgical nursing. This will be your nurse study guide. Now, you guys, you actually requested for this one and I wanna thank you. Thank you so much for all your support and your love. Maraming maraming salamat po. I'm gonna share to you real quick our objectives. So, we're gonna have description of the disease, definition of terms tayo, causes, clinical manifestations, assessment and diagnostics. We're also going to discuss medical management. Handa ka na, let's begin. Now, let's describe what is meningitis. Alam ko narinig mo na to, but, you know, just a refresher. This is an infection of the central nervous system, yung ating CNS, which can be divided into two broad categories. Those primarily involving the meninges and those primarily confined to the parenchyma, yung tinatawag nating encephalitis. Meningitis is a clinical syndrome characterized by inflammation of the meninges, the three layers of membranes that enclose the brain and spinal cord. These layers consist of the following. Sa mga susunod nating slide, tatalakay natin kung ano ba yung layers na yon para lang magkaroon tayo ng picture. Since inflammation siya ng meninges, and we all know that meninges have three membranes, three layers. So here's the illustration. Alright, you have your dura. Now, dura is a tough outer membrane. The po siya, dura matter, itong blue. Now, next, you have your arachnoid. This is a lacy, web-like middle membrane. Arachnoid. Okay, so these are the layers of your meninges. Okay, your dura, which is the tough outer layer. Your arachnoid, your middle layer. Now, you have your subarachnoid space, a delicate fibrous layer that contains many of the blood vessels that feed the brain and spinal cord. Now, anatomically, meningitis can be divided into inflammation of the dura. Ito po siya, yung subarachnoid space po natin. Dito siya matatagpuan sa between sa ating pia matter at ating arachnoid. Nandito siya. Now, let's proceed. Causes of meningitis include bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites, and drugs. Drugs, yes nga po, kagaya ng NSAIDs, metronidazole, and IV immunoglobulins. Now, let's talk about bacteria. Sa bacteria natin, um, streptococcal pneumoniae, a gram-positive coccus, is the most common bacterial cause of meningitis. If you have virus, enterovirus account for of the majority of the cases of aseptic meningitis in children, the non-polio enterovirus o yung ating NPEVs account for approximately 90% of the cases of viral meningitis in which a specific pathogen can be identified. The mumps virus is the most common cause of aseptic meningitis in immunized populations occurring in 30% of all patients with mumps. Now, fungi, yes, isang nga po sa mga causes ng ating meningitis this is fungi, Cryptococcus neoformans. Now, this is an encapsulated yeast-like fungus that is ubiquitous. Now, yung ating coccidiodes imitis is a soil-based dimorphic fungus that exists in mycelial 
and yeast forms. Lastomyces dermatotitis is a dimorphic fungus that has seen reported to be endemic in North America, specifically sa river po ito ng Mississippi and Ohio, okay? So we all know that parasite can cause um, what's this meningitis. So ano yung parasite na yon? Angiotrongilus cantonensis, the rat lung worm. Yes po, can cause eosophilic meningitis, ganatostoma, spinigerum, ang lakas naman makahari pattern nitong mga to, a GI parasite of wild and domestic dogs and cats. This may cause eosinophilic meningoencephalitis, ganatostoma, spinigerum, a GI parasite of wild and domestic dogs and cats may cause eosinophilic meningoencephalitis. All right, who that? That was tough, you guys. That was mouthful. Now, we're going to proceed with our clinical manifestations. Now, only about 44% of adults with bacterial meningitis exhibits the classic triad of fever, headache, and neck stiffness. Oh, ito na yung mga manifestations mo. Fever. The patient presents with fever at first, which ultimately grow worse. Bakit may fever? Kasi nga, meningitis. In my inflammation, IT. Is it is na alam mo yon? Yes. Seizures. As bacterial meningitis progresses, patients of any age may have seizures. Thirty percent nga po ng ating mga adults and children develop seizure, and forty percent of newborns and infants. Next stiffness. The patient feels. Stiffness of the neck as part of the triad of symptoms. Positive Koenig sign. Yes. Ano to? Naalala mo to, nurses? Patient is lying with the thigh flexed on the abdomen. The leg cannot be completely extended. Mm -hmm. Kung gusto mo gumawa tayo ng major discussion ng ating Koenigs and Brudinsky, which is ito na nga siya, at sabihin mo sa akin sa comment section below, okay? Now, yes. Positive Brudinsky sign nga rin po ang ating meningitis. When the patient's neck is flexed, flexion of the knees and hips is produced. When the lower extremity of one side is passively flexed, a similar movement is seen in opposite extremity. Meron din tayong neurological symptoms. Patients with subacute bacterial meningitis and most patients with viral meningitis present with neurological symptoms developing over 1 to 7 days. Ano pa? High-pitched cry. Yes, infants may present with high-pitched crying. Lethargy. Lethargy, hindi pagtapos ng liter H. Hindi ganun na. Lethargy. An infant may appear only to be slow or inactive or be irritable. Pero sa mga adult, mapapansin mo yan, yung mga weakness na yun, parang tamad na, tam, tamad na sila, tamlay na, tamlay na. Ano pa? Photalgia, o yung ating, o ating photophobia. Discomfort when patient looks into the bright lights. So once again, these are your manifestations of your meningitis. Let's proceed. Assessment and diagnostics. Paano nga ba ito ina-assess? At ano nga ba yung mga diagnostics na pwede natin gawin as a confirmatory of your meningitis? Lumbar puncture. In general, whenever the diagnosis of meningitis is strongly considered, a lumbar puncture should be promptly performed examination of the cerebrospinal fluid or yung ating CSF is the cornerstone of diagnosis meaning this is really the confirmatory test for your meningitis what else city scan a screening computed tomography of the head may be performed before LP o yung ating lumbar puncture to determine the risk of herniation ang lumbar puncture kasi is very traumatic sa ating spine. So you really want to do a CT scan first, you know, to, to check if there's any um, risk for herniation, okay? Now, blood studies. In patients with bacterial meningitis, a complete blood count where differential would demonstrate polymorphonuclear leukocytosis with a left shift. Chest radiography. As many as 50% of patients with pneumococcal meningitis also have evidence of 
pneumonia on initial chest radiography. So this is based on the studies. Kaya nasama yung chest x-ray kasi naisip mo, ay, bakit may chest x-ray? Kasi nga ayon sa studies and ayon sa research, 50% ng mga pasyente ay nagde-develop ng pneumonia sa initial chest radiography nila. So, might as well run a chest x-ray. Now, cultures and bacterial antigen testing. The utility of cultures is most evident when lumbar puncture is delayed until head imaging can rule out the risk of brain herniation, in which cases antimicrobial therapy is rightfully initiated before CSF samples can be obtained. Ano pa? Serum procalcitonin testing. Ano to, nurses? Narinig nyo na? Increasing data suggests that serum procalcitonin o yung, yung PCT levels can use as a guide to distinguish between bacterial and aseptic meningitis. Alright, so medical management. Paano mo nga ba imamanage ang iyong pasyente yung merong or nagpositive sa meningitis? Okay, one, you can um, start with crystalloid infusion. If the patient is in shock or hypotensive, crystalloid should be infused until euvolemia is achieved. Ano yung euvolemia? It is the normal blood volume. Okay? Now, seizure precautions. Kasi nga, merong seizure. Isa sa mga manifestations ng iyong meningitis is seizures. Now, if the patient's mental status is altered, seizure precautions should be considered. Seizures should be treated accordingly to the usual protocol and airway protection should be considered. What else? IVT and oxygen administration. If the patient is alert and in stable condition with normal vital signs, oxygen should be administered. Intravenous IV access established and rapid transport to the emergency department should be initiated. Ted. When we talk about your pharmacological management, ano-ano kaya yung gamot na binibigay sa mga pasyente nag-positive sa meningitis, okay? You have your sulfonamides, trimethoprim, and sulfamethoxazole work together to inhibit bacterial synthesis of tetrahydrophobic folic acid. Ano pa? Tetracyclines. Tetracyclines inhibit protein synthesis and therefore bacterial growth by binding with 30S and possibly 50S ribosomal subunits of susceptible bacteria. Carbapenines. Now, this inhibit bacterial cell wall synthesis by binding the penicillin binding proteins. Carbapenes or carbapenemes, excuse me, including meropenem, can be used for treatment of meningitis. Fluoroquinolones inhibit bacterial DNA synthesis and consequently growth by inhibiting DNA gyrase and typosomerases, which are required for replication, transcription, and translation of generic material. Ano pa? Glycopeptides. Vancomycin inhibits bacterial cell wall synthesis by blocking glycopeptide poly Polymerization. It is indicated for many infectious caused by gram-positive bacteria. Yes, if bacterial origin, okay? Aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides primarily act by binding to 16S ribosomal RNA within the 30S ribosomal subunit. They have mainly bacteria. Bactericide. They have mainly bactericidal activity against susceptible aerobic gram negative bacilli. Cephalosporins. Third generation, guys, huh? Third generation cephalosporins are less active against gram positive organisms than first generation cephalosporins. They are highly active against Enterobacteriaceae, Neisseri, and H. influenzae. Antivirals. Antiviral agents interfere with viral replication. They weaken or abolish viral activity. They can be used in viral meningitis. Ano pa? Systemic antifungals. Diba? Naalala mo? It can also be caused by fungus. Um, antifungal agents are used in the management of infectious disease caused by fungi. Vaccines inactivated. Inactivated bacterial vaccines are used to induce active immunity against 
pathogens responsible for meningitis. Pwede ka rin magbigay ng corticosteroids. The use of steroids has been shown to improve overall outcome for patients with certain types of bacterial meningitis such as your H. influenzae, tuberculosis, and pneumococcal meningitis. Osmotic diuretics. Manitol may reduce subarachnoid space pressure by creating an osmotic gradient between CSF in the arachnoid space and plasma. Loop diuretics. Yes, furosemide is a loop diuretic that increases the excretion of water by interfering with the chloride binding co-transport co -transport system, which in turn inhibits sodium and chloride reabsorption in the ascending loop of Henle and distal renal tubule. Okay, magalala kasi aaralin natin itong diuretics. Excited na ako kasi gusto kong gumawa ng nursing pharmacology discussion regarding sa ano-ano ba yung mga klase ng diuretics natin. Marami yun eh. So, kalma kayo ha. Watch out. Subscribe ka na. At ang pinakalas natin, eh, at ang pinakalas natin, sorry, Ha? Since meron tayong seizure, hindi ko nalagay dyan yung anti-convulsants. Anti-convulsants are used to help aggressively controlled seizures in acute meningitis because seizure activity increases intracranial pressure. Alright you guys, thank you so much your, uh, thank you so much you guys for watching. Hope you, you learned something. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Abangan nyo din po yung next video natin regarding sa nursing management for meningitis, nursing responsibilities, and nursing considerations, okay? I just want to make sure that I have this one at a time para mas specific yung ating information. Once again you guys, please help me grow my channel ano, pamalita nyo na, pamalita nyo na to sa mga friends nyo. Share, kasi ito nga ang libreng review center sa YouTube. I'll see you again next time. You stay safe, okay? Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Help me grow my channel. You're already here. You might as well subscribe. Hashtag Team Kuta. Give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends. Let me know what you guys think. Put them down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to check out the other playlists I created for you. I'll be putting the links on the description box or simply click this icon button right here. Let's connect. Follow me on all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gavi. I'll see you again.